If we had put as much attention on building our immune systems for the last year as we have social distancing and masking uh, and ask questions, well, how do we build an immune system? I wanted Fauci, Fauci to step to the platform and say, okay, America, you know, uh, let's spend the next week building our immune systems. Hey, Hilda here. I bring you experts, experiences, and epic adventures to boost your health. One year ago, I went down to Polyface Farms to interview Joel Salatin about the COVID situation. You might be like, wait, what? Why are you talking to a farmer about it? Because Joel is the most common sense, down to earth person I know. He understands how human beings interact with nature and how we interact with one another and how to boost our health naturally. So here it is a year later, I decided to find out, has anything changed? I was curious. So I went down to see Joel again and this is the conversation that ensued. A year ago, I came down to Polyface Things had just broken out, so to speak, and I was like, who do I trust? Who, who do I want to find out their opinion of this dangerous virus? And so I came down here. I know you're not a doctor or a scientist, but I trust you. What was your take, if you can remember, a year ago on the virus? Well, my take a year ago was that um, we didn't know where it came from. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, you know, we, we took with all that we could imagine, the idea that it came from a bat, you know, that it was this thing. And uh, so there were a couple takes at the time. One was, um, we probably should be careful about what we eat. I think the take out there was the masks and the social distancing. And here we are a year later, and we're still doing that. Yeah, well, the the thing that I got crucified for early on was saying, I want it. I mean, uh, uh, let, let me get it now. I'm, I'm healthy and let me get it over with. And this whole herd immunity thing, as a farmer, we, we, know, we know that every disease thing we've ever had on this farm, we created. This isn't some evil demon waving something. I, I think I'm going to bring something to humanity. There's always a reason. I just felt like, well, we need to let it run its course and let us get our immune systems going. And and the other thing that I said uh, right at the beginning was, it's time to build our immune systems. Yes. That, that was my thing from day one. Let's build our immune systems. If we had put as much attention on building our immune systems for the last year as we have social distancing and masking, uh, and ask questions, well, how do we build an immune system? I wanted mm-hmm. Fauci, Fauci to step to the platform and say, okay, America, you know, yeah. uh, let's spend the next week building our immune system. Sleep for at least eight hours. You know, we're going to get out in the sun for yeah. you know, 20 minutes a day. We're going to work up a sweat for 20 minutes a day. Uh, we're going to, we're, we're not going to eat any junk food. And you know, we have a smoke out day, you know, the, the great American smoke. We can have the great, um, the great American um, soft drink out day. Yes, you know? yes. Um, we're going to cook real food for a day, um, you know. And forgive one another and connect with one another. That really stuck with me from yeah, our that, conversation that, last time. That was one. For our it, connections yeah, as well. But so, you're right. If we had only put emphasis on that, we could be in a totally different place right now. We'd be in a totally different place. And one of the, one of the things for sure now, here we are a year later, mm-hmm. that we've seen is is the level of, of uh, whatever, of movement, of activity that can happen when, when a whole civilization, I mean, forget the world right now, just mm-hmm. when, when, the, you, when, when we pull together, mm-hmm. I'm saying we, um, when you pull together for something, goodness, uh, whether you like the vaccines or not like the vaccines, that was a monumental effort mm-hmm. to, to the warp speed thing. Just imagine if we could harness that level of interest and dedication to... Um, let's grow more earthworms, let's grow more soil, let's, you know, let's, let, let's eat right, mm-hmm. let's sleep right, let's forgive right, let's relationally right, you know, um, let's affirm each other right. I mean, can you imagine the kind of physical, spiritual, mental, emotional healing that would happen if we could harness that level of, of laser commitment to a healing message? I mean, not that the other one wasn't he- they were, I, I know, they were, the benefit of the doubt. Everybody was trying to, to find a, you know, a healing pathway. But vaccine is, a, is an after-the-fact healing, mm-hmm. not, not a proactive healing. Exactly. It's, I know people who are getting it because they feel like they can't do certain things until they get that. Right. When in actuality, I feel like that's a prison invented in our own mind. Am I, I mean, maybe I'm off base. Mm-hmm. I'm not a scientist either. But it seems to me 
connections with others are is just as vital for our health as anything else and it's actually proactive as well well too and the other thing the other thing that this year has really brought out um, is just a new awareness of the whole vaccine situation I'll just say vaccine situation and, I, and, and look I'm not a rabid anti-vaxxer I'm not um, but I think there's a big difference between when I was a child and got whatever three vaccines before I was seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. That's a whole different kettle of fish than now getting whatever it is, 40 or something, you know, it's before high. you're, before you're two, before you're three. It's, it's a, um, you know, so many things, so many things, a little bit is fine, mm -hmm. but you can easily, you know, get way too much. I had, a, I had a naturopathic physician one time. He said, you know, we, we think of wellness on a continuum, like you're sick down here and you're well up here and you're on some sort of a continuum between, you know, sick and, and well, you know, a linear, mm -hmm. a, you know, just a linear graph, okay? He says, not like that. He said, actually, it's a bell curve. And sickness is on the bottom, wellness is up here. <clears throat> and you're either on your way up or you're on your way down or you're sitting here on the crest. And <clears throat> and, and if, if, you're, if you're here sick and you want to get up here to this wellness, you know, mm -hmm. on the top of the curve... Um, Let's say you have an infection and, and you get some antibiotics, mm -hmm. all right? Well, the doctor says, we'll take them all and you get well. But if you keep taking them, then you, then they cause problems down the other side. Uh -huh. and, and so what he said, he said, this isn't a linear. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a curve. And that's why sometimes, well, I mean, a perfect example is fasting. Fasting mm -hmm. is very good for you, mm -hmm. okay? I'm sick. I'm going to fast. Oh, I feel good now. I'm just going to keep fasting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> down the other side. So, so there, there, there are things that when you're not well, that when you do and you keep doing them. I mean, opioids. There's another one. You know, oh, right. um, uh, they can they can you know help in a certain situation, and then and, but but if you keep, then you're an addict. You're an addict, right? right. And so um, so that has always kind of stood out to me that mm. uh, and for me so you know may again i'm not i'm not a rabid anti-vaxxer um and so for me you know two or three early on maybe was okay i mean there would be people that would violently disagree with that <laughs> but I, i'm just i'm just gonna say i'm just gonna yeah, yeah, give yeah. benefit of the doubt let's assume that those two or three back there in the 50s and 60s were, were maybe acceptable mm -hmm. It's a whole different kettle of fish to say, all right, let's pile on now, okay, and 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 now we're now we're dropping down, and and, and there's a lag time. That that's the thing that's that's uh -huh. concerning to me. All of the lag time, you know, in 1985 when Reagan and Ted Kennedy got together yeah. and said, let's take the liability off of the the pharmaceutical companies because mm -hmm. they said we're going to stop making vaccines because we're we we're paying out too many, you know. Um, Problems, yeah, 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 uh, for, yeah. For people having problems with vaccines, and Reagan and uh, um, Kennedy said, "Well, we'll just make them safe." They said, "Well, you can't because you have these side effects. You have these yeah. things. You know, all this little print, you know, that's yeah, in the, the bottle. Print, yeah, yeah, all <laughs> little fine print, all little thing." And so, so in 1985, of course, you know, that was the thing. They mm -hmm. took off the the you can't sue the the pharmaceutical company for vaccine uh, uh, side idea. effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. 1990 was when food allergies took off, oh. autism took off, and so what? So, oh. a lot of the people that I'm reading after um, are saying, five years from now, we're going to start seeing a plethora of of new things. Right. In other words, people are getting some of these approved for experimental yeah. use Experiment, only yeah, yeah, injections yeah. because they're so desperate, as I was saying, to get back together and to get back to normal life right. and maybe mm -hmm. to protect themselves from something. Sure. But what they don't know, nor do the manufacturers know, yes. is what the consequences are going to be. That's right. That's right. And and we know biologically, the, the biological consequences of things, it's it, it's a long tail. You know, it, it's, like, it's like a bridal... Uh, a long bridal train, you know, mm -hmm. and we see that here. For, you know, we, we lease several properties in the area, mm -hmm. and um, and and the landowners always ask us, "Well, how soon? You know, how soon are we going to see things change? How soon are we going to see the grass change, clover come? You know, blah blah blah." And and we always have to tell them. Uh, I mean, you know, we 
we have a lot of experience with this. We've done it a long time, and we're pretty good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still, you can't turn nature on a dime. Uh -uh. You know, succession and adaptation in, in the ecology takes time. Right. And, uh, and, and it just... There, there's a lag. It's a slinky effect, mm -hmm. and so when you know when we think that in our bodies uh, there are whatever you know a quadrillion a quadrillion <laughs> um, uh, commercial decisions being made, uh -huh. you know, per millisecond. Yeah. Think about it, a quadrillion per millisecond. You wow. know, in our bodies, you realize that that. It takes a while for for a newcomer to circulate, you know, throughout that that network, mm -hmm. okay. So that the, so that the ones in my ankle find out about the ones in my shoulder, mm -hmm. and, and and what anyway is it, it's mind boggling. It but, is but, mind boggling. <laughs> I get what you're coming at though. But, but but it does mean that we need we need to wade into that with. Fear and trepidation, not like a bunch of swashbuckling, you know, sailors and pirates, and we claim this territory. You know, <laughs> that that's not that's not what nature likes. Right. Well, and in the same vein, I guess some would say, well, this virus coming at us is a newcomer that our bodies are going to react to, and we don't want to take the chance that we're going to have a negative reaction to that. Well, well, certainly, and so and so the question then is, well. What can I do to build up a, a protective mm -hmm. boundary? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, in um, I'm trying to think of when it was. Was it April, May last year, um, when Joe Rogan called and he said, mm -hmm. you know, would you come on my show? And they need to talk about this this COVID thing. I went and um, um, he said, would you mind getting tested for COVID before you, before you come in the studio? Was he afraid? I'm just curious. No, 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 no. I, I think I think it was strictly uh, just a protocol. No, no, he wasn't. A, it was he was just. It's part of his. He's just interested. Right, right. Interested in stuff. Oh, I okay? see. He's just interested. Okay. And curious, curious would be maybe yeah. even a better word. And uh, inquisitive. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so uh, you know he, he has the means to pay for the testing, and so you know get that. So I said, sure, that's fine. You know, so before I went in the studio, you know, you had a, a physician there that pricked my finger and took the did the antibody uh -huh. test. It was it was the little it was the ten minute test. Oh, okay. okay. So you wait ten minutes, and he I said, well, what you know, ten minutes. He said uh, nothing. You know, uh, oh bummer. You know, because <laughs> I, I I actually wanted to have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I said, you know, well, shoot, I was hoping to have it. He said, well, you may have. I said, wait a minute, you got this antibody. He said, he said, well, he said. Your body has multiple defenses. Mm. You know, think about bulwarks, okay? Mm. And and you know, you've got a you've got a <laughs> you know you, you got a hedge, and then you have a moat, and then you have the castle wall, you yeah. know, <laughs> and then you finally have the final thing where the king is, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and he said, Your body's that way. And he said, if your immune system is good enough on your outside. It doesn't get in your skin. You'll never have it in your antibodies. It doesn't get over the hedge. It doesn't get over the hedge. Ah. That's right. And and that was both encouraging yeah. to me, but it was also frustrating uh -huh. because it means I, I, I can't go somewhere and find out if I've had it or not or, or if I've been exposed to it. or you know, mm. I don't know where I am on that continuum. Right. Uh, I mean, so... Anyway, it was it was just interesting. Yeah, it and, is interesting. And it, and it is it has made me it, it that was another, you know, drop to make me you know, drop on the head. Uh, uh -huh. to, to to make me well, you know, question mm -hmm. a lot of the data, a lot of the strategy, a lot of the stuff out there. Um, I just think I just think we've we've not gotten uh, I don't think we've gotten unprejudiced uh, narratives. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think they've all been kind of agenda-driven, uh, uh, prejudice-driven narratives. That's why there's such a, a partisan, a political thing uh, mm -hmm. issue to this, and um, and it's, it's it's really quite unfortunate. Um, I mean, 
my my opinion right now, mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. is this was never a governmental issue. What do you mean? I mean, sicknesses come, they go, things happen, and and people will make their decisions. So P people will, you know, look, people that were afraid to go out would not have gone out. Mm -hmm. People that weren't would have. I think, I think that there's there's a lot of breakdown in immunological function when you live in fear. Yes, I agree. all the time, yeah. all the time, and so sometimes. So so I don't know sometimes if if people that seem to be whatever immune to it. Um, are partly immune to it just because they're not afraid. Right. Okay. And 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 so so. All I'm saying is, I don't think that this was a CDC, NIH, that this was not a governmental thing at all. This it, is it, so interesting because I feel like people around the world are like, probably watching right now and thinking, this man is crazy. This is a worldwide health crisis. All sure. the governments had to weigh in. But sure. if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying each individual should make the risk benefit analysis yes. of whether or not they want to venture forth or do something else. Yes, for sure, for sure. And you know, you know, the best way to make that happen is to make sure that all of the information is on the table. Mm. And so isn't it interesting that during this we've had a a just a a, a tyrannical uh, crackdown mm. in quote unquote misinformation censorship i mean sally fallon's book can't be sold on amazon mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing uh this this the fallout from covid in my view the fallout from the the, the broader cultural fallout has been much more severe than the actual disease right much more severe and the the idea that we would accept um such governmental encroachment into our health lives, in, into our decisions, that we would accept, um, you know, teachers not going back to school, uh, that we would accept the things that have happened. Um, I mean, goodness, we serviced 50 restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, up until COVID. And I don't know that 20 of them are still surviving. And... That, if that isn't a taking, you know, we have eminent domain in this country, you know, if they want to build a road through my farm, you know, and, and I don't want to sell, then it gets adjudicated, right? Mm -hmm. I say, no, I want this much. Government says, well, we think it's worth this much. We go before a judge. We each present our side, and a judge says, okay, you know, and it's usually mm -hmm. some hybrid of, of the two things. Um but but in this case, we had we had businesses told you have to close. No judge, and, no jury. Yeah, hairdressers, cosmetologists, you know, all these, uh, um, um, you know, uh, um, chiropractors. Uh, uh, goodness, um, I'm just trying to think of all the, you know, the the, the kinds of businesses that were right. closed. Right. I mean, in Virginia, farmers markets, farmers markets. Oh. We're calling you okay. Oh and, and, and and so so just imagine what it what it has meant culturally for those millions of people who were told by our society you're not essential mm -hmm. you're not essential mm -hmm. now you add that you add that I'm not essential to the fear of covid mm -hmm. i mean you've got this psychological emotional collapse of your world and then you can't pay your bills. I'm not going to pay my rent. I'm going to be homeless. And, uh, of course, you know, then you get stimulus checks. And then, well, then inflation's going to go. And we're creating funny money. And, and, and it's, it's, it's just a, a whole series of these things that, 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 that I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that if COVID had happened and had been reported in the press, okay, it's yeah. here. We, you know, we, get, we get experts talking about it. But it's not a government's issue. It it's not the government's issue. Right, right. It's it, it it's choice. It's it's our own bodies, our own health, our own choice, and and so so there would be some restaurants that man, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not going to provide, I'm not going to provide a, a platform for a super spreader event. We're closed. We're going to shut down for a couple of weeks or whatever. 
some people say, oh, we think it's nothing. We're going to go on out to eat anyway, all right? And, and, and the fact is that when people get information, they make decisions. You know, the, 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 people do respond to information. We're not stupid, you know. But in a way, I feel like messages have been drummed into us. Um, I've noticed our family and others have started to use a shorthand like, well, last year we had planned to go, but COVID. Everyone's like, well, we were going to do this, but COVID. Yeah. It wasn't COVID, Joel. It was the restrictions that you're talking about. Right. There is a difference between the sickness yes. and what the decisions were that have changed our lives. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And and it's the, um, it's the inconsistency, indeed hypo- hypocrisy. I mean, in Virginia, we closed farmer's markets, but we left, of course, Costco stayed open. Mm. Um all the all the restaurants that died were the little mom and pop restaurants, but if you had a, a drive-through window, it's the best year ever. Okay, so 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 when you start looking at the at the um, who prospered and who impoverished, you know, mm-hmm. during this during this time, this has been um, Amazon. Amazon as big as they were in February of twenty. 20, yeah. Okay. They were already big. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they were big. They doubled in 12 months. They doubled in 12 months. Oh my gosh. Meanwhile, thousands of little storefronts in middle America closed up. Mm. And so this has been the biggest transfer of wealth wow. from small to big in history. It's, 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 um, and, and now with all of the stimulus checks coming out, who get, you know, all the, all the bailouts and the new, you know, the new trillions and trillions of dollars, who gets to spend that first? Well, Wall Street. So that's making, that's making Wall Street go up. You know, the people on the inside, they get to spend those dollars first. Right. Those dollars, those dollars get spent, you know, 10 times before they get to me. Ah. All right. And so, so, um, there again, the the first day dollars get to be spent before they become devalued mm-hmm. down you know down through the system mm-hmm. and so so there's a there's a huge transfer of power decision making and wealth going on and it's um, you know look I'm I'm not a I'm not a conspiratist at least I try not to be a conspiratist um, but but the, the the coordination of these things is um, it is really threatening. It, it's, it's quite threatening. It has to leave you scratching your head when you do look at some of the data, too, that says 99.9% of the people who contract COVID will recover and be fine. Sure. So that percentage compared to previous viruses or plagues mm-hmm. or what have you that, you know, accosted mankind, it's like the tiniest sliver affected, and yet there's been this huge response. But somehow, I don't know how, <laughs> again, the public has been you know, move to such a place that they think, oh, I can only move around if I get an injection or I can only trust in the government right now to take care of me. Um, but that doesn't sound like your mindset at all. No, it's not. And, and you know, the thing, that, I guess the thing that gets me is there's been no true um, scientific analysis comparing different responses. Mm. For example, for example, um, I guess Florida came as close to anyone as not shutting down. Yeah. And the cases are the same in Florida as in California. Mm-hmm. But I would go even beyond that. I would say, I would say, listen, why don't we try, why don't we try, let, let, let's take a segment, let's take, um, uh, well, you could take one day or you could take out of one airport, all right, we're, we're going we're gonna to fly 10 flights with nobody wearing a mask. Uh-huh. We're, we're, we're going to eliminate the, you know, all the antimicrobials. We're going to eliminate all that stuff. And when I get on the plane now, you know, you're supposed to take this packet, you know, this little, yes. this little, uh, they give you the there. sanitizer. Say, chemicals, chemicals, chemicals. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want chemicals. You know? And they always say, oh, what would matter them? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm like, no, thank you. And they're like, why doesn't she want this wipe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. So anyway, you know, why, why couldn't, why couldn't we say, we we want we want volunteers to take ten flights and we're and we're going to track you, and 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 see if we have a, a spike in COVID. 
from 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 ten flights out of pick your airport, Atlanta. I don't care. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Not none of that's been done. No, right. nobody has said, okay, we're gonna open up. I mean, we could have in the fall. We're we're gonna we're gonna pick one NFL football game and allow the stadium to be full. And 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 everybody, we want everybody's name, and and we wanna we wanna know yeah. if there was a spike in COVID within two weeks after attending an NFL football with a full stadium. Uh huh. But th- there there's been no there's been no testing yeah. of that that. that if you're really, if you're really looking, if you're really trying to prove efficacy of something, yeah, yeah, that's the way to do it. I mean, you know, they would say it's unethical, though. They, they'd be afraid that people would get sick and die. But of course, the opposite would happen. So they say they're afraid it's unethical, when in actuality, it probably would prove something that wouldn't make anybody happy in power. I think. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I mean, and and and, and 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 to be fair to the other side, it could be that such a such a uh, you know a trial would attract. Happy-go-lucky, fearless, uh, you know, yes, people. That, you know, yeah. who's gonna have a good, a good time? Who already have a better immune system because they have a better outlook on life. You know, they're not right. going around oh, I'm scared. Um, and, and and I get that. Yeah. But 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 would that still be an interesting yeah. thing to say? Hey, everybody! Uh, instead of watching, you know, CNN and MSNBC, let's take one week and. We're gonna we're gonna shut the news channels off, and we're gonna watch Laurel and Hardy and Abbott and Costello, <laughs> and the Great Gilder Sleeves, and you know I Love Lucy, yeah. and the Brady Bunch. I mean, you name your name yeah, your yeah. your funny, and we're just gonna laugh for a week. Mm. You know, Whoa. wow, that <laughs> would be amazing. Although I bet a lot of people watching this might not know who those people are. <laughs> It'd be more like I don't know. I don't know. I don't even watch things, you know. I, I don't either. James Corbett, I'm just guessing. The guy who does uh, carpool karaoke, I don't know. But the point is, we need to laugh, right? We do need to laugh. Yeah. You're so right. Yeah. And that brings me back to the farm. Because I feel like people are getting all these interventions and all these messages that they would be far better off not getting and being outside and experiencing real life, getting their hands dirty, you know what I mean? It comes back to real connection, not the virtual stuff anymore. Yeah, well, you know, we just had this fantastic study out of Stanford yeah. that showed that spending, um, uh, I think it was two hours a week. Um, now, they they did it in uh, un, under trees. They went to a forest, probably because they didn't have a farm nearby wherever mm-hmm. the college was, where they were doing the study. But... They compared the immunological response for two hours a week in in a woods compared to two hours a week like in a sidewalk, you know, that, walking down the street. Uh-huh. It was profound. Really? It was profound. And in fact, in fact, um, in in Finland, um, they've done a. That's where they lead the world now, showing that infants out in a uh, like a dairy barn, mm-hmm. you know, they have a lot of small farms there. Yeah. Um, that they have a much more robust immune system than than urbanites. And F- Finland is leading the world on this. Uh-huh. So in Finland, they actually did a study where they took they took soil um, from a healthy healthy soil, and they actually just put it in a in a pouch in a welcome mat in a door in 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 six houses uh-huh. in urban America, and it made um, reduced asthmatics, uh, it increased microbiome, just by people, you know, stepping on a on a little dust. Wow. I, I mean, I put it out on, on my blog. I, I said, I said, I think I, there's I think there's an entrepreneurial option. Yes. Here. We, I mean, why can't we provide some compost soil pouches? And, and start a welcome mat thing and, and you know, a subscription service. I love Pe- it. People can pay 100 bucks a year, you know, we'll come and change it out every six months. And <laughs> I love it. Forget the Himalayan salt stuff. You know, yeah. this is something simpler, more accessible, more local. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's new research now. Uh, there's new research now showing that everybody that gets COVID is missing one phylum in their microbiome. And so, that, so that's developing as well. Uh, now, what is that phylum? What feeds it? What you know is it? Is it bone broth? Is it a, is it a pouch of of breathing in some soil at your front door? You know, mm. I don't know. But but for sure, for sure, Hilda, we know 
we know that being out, breathing in, you know, the, the bacteria, the fungal, the, just the air from nature, we know that that's an incredible, mm -hmm. um, you know, feeder catalyst in our whole, you know, microbiome and respiratory system. And so, uh, yeah, we, we want people to come out to the farm and walk barefoot and stick your hands in some compost and, you know, um, pick up a chick, uh, you know, get real. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we think those are really critical um, immune builders. I do too. I just can't help but think of naysayers right now who might say, well, Joel, this is easy for you to say. You're healthy, you're well, you do live on that farm. Um, you obviously haven't been affected by COVID. There have been, you know, millions of people mm -hmm. around the world who have died. Like, you know, what do you say? How can you be so kind of cavalier in front of this huge health crisis? Look, my heart breaks for, for I mean, I, I know people that have had COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, seriously, you know. But it's very interesting to me, and, and this will sound uncharitable, but I know what's in their refrigerators. Mm. And they've got Diet Coke, and they've got, <laughs> you know, Hot Pockets and, and salami, uh, not, not real salami, you know. Uh, <laughs> and, and um, you know, uh, the pantry's full of Cheetos mm. and potato chips. And, um, you know, look, I'm not saying that a Diet Coke is sinful. I'm not saying that eating some nachos is sinful. Nothing will kill you occasionally, mm -hmm. okay, all right? But, you know, when that, when you, when you have that as a mainstay of your, of your diet, and then, of course, you plop down in front of it, you come home from work and you plop down in front of the TV. I mean, you need to be taking a brisk 60-minute walk, you know, and mm -hmm. get a little bit of sweat under your armpits, and, you know, and, and, and move around. I mean, um... So, yeah, I mean, sure, I could die tomorrow. There's no question, you know. Yeah. Uh, any of us could. In, 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 any of us could. Life That's is right. risky. That's right. But you can die from it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Life That's is risky. And, and, but, but it's precious. It's precious, which means we need to value the things that stimulate life, mm. not the stuff that, that, um, that militates against life. And... Um, and when you when you cheat, when you cheat your body by getting junk food, I mean, or or or, or uh, nutrient deficient food, mm -hmm. unwhole food, when you cheat your body like that, you're basically saying, well, I don't think life's worth very much. Mm -hmm. And when you say life's not worth very much, what does that do to your whole psyche? Does that you know your whole your whole thing? And so. Um, so no, I'm I'm not trying to be cavalier about it. I I do think it's interesting that we haven't had anybody die of the flu. <laughs> That's uh, true. Nobody died of the flu last year, right, according to the CDC. Right, right. Nobody. Right, and so, so. Um, That's a statistics game right there. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I I don't know. I just I'll tell you, I don't trust the figures. I don't trust the data. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've. I don't want to spread rumors, so I don't want to. I don't want to say <laughs> stuff. But 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 I have heard enough stuff. I mean, in our salesman, we've had we've had registered nurses come in. That the the stuff that's going on. The the listen the perverse incentive mm. of these hospitals that get an extra whatever it is you know, twenty five or thirty thousand dollars if they have a COVID patient, and and if they, if they even just treat one, they get an extra thirteen or fourteen thousand. Since when? Did we incentivize? Did we incentivize hospitals and caregivers um, with with an economic incentive to check a box that a patient had this illness? We don't do that for heart disease. We don't no. do that for diabetes. We don't do that for anything. I mean, that, that's and that's a perverse thing. And so there are a lot of there's a lot of fraud going on out there, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on. Usually, follow the money, mm -hmm. follow the money, and listen. It, you know, if I'm running a hospital and I can get an extra twenty five thousand dollars for if if I just put down this patient died of COVID, mm -hmm. 
not with COVID, but of COVID. That's right. You know, <laughs> uh, if I can put that down and get an extra thirty thousand dollars, hey, I'm a little hospital, maybe not even a little, a big hospital. Okay, yeah. um, that's a that's a. I'll find it pretty easy to check that box. Right, right. You know, and so I, I think I think we're just we're just seeing a lot of things that are anomalies, mm -hmm. and and I just. I just don't, uh, I don't trust it. And, and the comorbidities, you know, look, I'm really sorry. Um, I mean, who wants to lose their grandparent? Who wants to lose their parents? Nobody wants to, wants to do that. But we, we are fixed. It, it's interesting how instead of being fixated on living, we're fixated on dying. Yes. Why why don't we why don't we put as much emphasis on living well yeah as we do on trying to preserve another six months of life right I know what you mean like what if I could yes live the next six months you know outside connecting mm -hmm. with people or I can live the next six month six months avoiding people and I mean I'm only dying longer I'm not living longer yeah that's so right. that's to your point earlier of the preciousness of life let's like really get the most out of it, which means connecting with others, getting the sunshine, all those things, because then you're really valuing it highly. Yeah, that, that's right. And, and I mean, we, we've seen it like even in our, our deliveries, you know, uh, I mean, I'm out here on the farm. I get to, I have this idyllic, you know, pastoral place to live in, you know, and, 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 um, I don't apologize for not getting out much because you don't get enough. I know I don't. And you know what? That's fine with me. Right? But where we get out is our deliveries into the urban. We're, we're delivering, you know, food into the urban sector. We have these drop points and we have these weekly delivery runs. And so we interact, you know, with those. And I mean, you know, customers come to fisticuffs almost, you know, um, how dare you come to this drop? Well, it's outside, you know, not wearing a mask or, or, or whatever. And, and, uh, and just the, um, I, I think, I think people are just getting worn down Yes. with the fight of it all, mm -hmm. the fight of it all. And I just heard a, a radio ad the other day and they said, we're going to hang in there. We're going to keep doing these things, even if we've gotten the injection, because we're not going to like flag now like it is like this battle right but again they're they're fighting to not die which isn't maybe the right hill to die on no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> you know what i yeah, mean they're fighting yeah. just to stay alive a little longer but not touching anybody like what kind of life is that yeah yeah so so for you know emotionally for me mm -hmm. for me i literally don't think about it mm -hmm. and, and the problem is if you're out there circulating very much, you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just I just flew last week. I, I did a seven leg flight to Florida and then California, doing some consulting work for farms and a, another outfit out there. And uh, and you know what? So you know, I had to wear the mask, right? Because you can't get on the plane without a mask. And I finally found one that I can actually breathe in, you know, and kind of function. And so, uh, so anyway, I wear it. Of course, it's getting filthy. It's filthy. Can, can <laughs> it's full anyway. of good microbes, so that's <laughs> <Yeah>. good. <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, anyway, what bothers me more than more than even now the masking is that every few minutes there's this, if you don't comply, you'll be guilty of criminal and, you know, uh, subject to misdemeanors and fines and imprisonment. And, and what what does it do in the cultural psyche to just have that blasted into your head all day, every few minutes, it's it's not healthy. It's that, degrading. You it, feel like it, it is. It, it is. <laughs> There's no dignity in it. No. There's no dignity in it at all. And and um, and and I think that that just fuels. Mm -hmm. It fuels this. What do we meditate on? You know, in our in our in our inner. You know, when we're when we say you know when you're not thinking about anything, and man. If, if when your thoughts just slide into neutral and you find yourself scared, that's not a healthy place. Mm -hmm. when, when, you, when you slide into neutral, your, your thoughts should go to hope and opportunity mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and affirmation. 
I love it. I love it. And that reminds me, not too long ago when we were together, Joel, you said, you know, we need a secret signal to give each other. He said, like, motorcycle riders put their hand down, yeah, right, yeah. to show, hey, we're in this together. I mean, in a different way than the messaging. But what I'm trying to get at is, if you have to comply with a mask, I'm going to unveil it now. I haven't yeah. even showed you this. Yeah. But if you have to comply with a mask, if you're flying or there's some place where it's you simply must do it, um, I think our signal should be a double tap on the heart. Oh. Because it's like we're really living. Uh -huh. Like a little heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. So yeah. that's going to be our little yeah. signal. So the next time you're in the airport, just keep doing this uh -huh. and um, let people know we get that this is really living. This isn't necessarily living, you know? Yeah, yeah, that, that's fair. I like it. Hopefully people don't think you're having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll grab you and head you through the defibrillator. Oh, man. All right, well, we're thinking about it. But I really, I really like your hope. I really like that idea of when our minds shift to neutral, what are we thinking about? And if we find that we're living in fear, maybe we need to turn off the messaging yeah. and, and tune in to what's around us and what's really real. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And, and, and put, and, and, and make a good, there, there's nothing wrong with making a, a very practical um, to-do list of, of things, you know, the, the, the way to form a habit. You know, they mm -hmm. say um, you have to do it for, what is it, 66, 66 days in a row mm -hmm. till it's a habit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and just, just pick something, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that you can uh, make a habit about. Um, I mean, you know, in the morning before I get out of bed, you know, I have a habit of praying, okay? Mm -hmm. I didn't always do that, but I made myself do it for a while, and, and I felt, I, I find it sets the spirit for the day, you know? You're, and and um, you know, it, could be, it could be anything yeah. like that. It could be um, telling your spouse they're, you know, uh, uh, smashingly handsome or beautiful or whatever, you know? Uh, but but just, just a good, positive uh, thing to bring to your life, to bring positive energy in a time when... I think I think as a nation we just I think we just feel like we've been run over by a truck. I know, and, you it's know, as, true. As, a, as, a, as a as a culture, and um, and that's just not a good feeling. And, I know. honestly didn't think a year from now. I mean, like in yeah, 2020 yeah, right. when we were together, that I would we would still be talking about this. This is still right. happening. What do you think? Joel Salton predicts the future. What do you think a year from now it's gonna it's gonna be like? What do you think's gonna be happening? You know, that's the one thing I don't do. I don't prophesy. I, I'm not a prophet. <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 will, I will say, I will say that, um, that now I won't be surprised if, if it's whatever, just as bad or, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll be COVID. It might, you know, who knows, it might, it might be something else. But, um, you know, now after seeing what I'm, what I've, delved into now with the whole kind of vaccine world. I never was, you know, the whole anti-vax thing didn't develop until we were gone. We didn't, you know, we didn't do much with our kids yeah. and I didn't have, you know, it kind of wasn't our world. But um, um, having now developed into it, I'm now, you know, big picture, most concerned about what this is going to do two, three years down the road. Are we going to have a, 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 a trial experiment induced mm -hmm. problem you know, down the road? Which and, we don't see right now, but as you said, right there's a long tail of the there, results of those interventions. There, there, there is a long tail. There is a long tail, and, and we just don't know. And so, so, rather, so rather than focus on that, I'm doubling down to try to get people informed Get to where you can get good information from people and, and realize that you're responsible for the experts you, you pick. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my, you know, I love history. And, uh, you know, as a Christian, I, you know, I, I, I really appreciate Jewish history. And it's interesting that during the time of the kings, uh, which is in the historical books of the Bible, you know, Kings and Chronicles and Samuel, um, that... 50% of the time, they had a lot of terrible kings, yeah, you know, yeah. really bad kings. And, and they had some good kings, but they had a lot of really bad ones. And it's interesting that half the time it says the king made the people sin worse than they'd ever done. And half the time it says the people made the king sin worse than he'd ever done. And so I take from that that, yes, our leaders and experts are responsible. Yes, we're also responsible mm. for picking who we listen to. Mm -hmm. We're responsible for picking who we listen to. And so 
Um, so that's why it's so important to be eclectic in, in, in our, our, our reading mm -hmm. and, and in our, our research and what we're doing and why this whole censorship thing is so horrible because often it's from the minority view that truth comes. Mm. Very seldom does truth come from, a, from, the, minor, from the majority ah. view. Very seldom. Normally, it's the, it's the prophet crying in the wilderness. It's the, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's the minority view that really comes with a, aha, oh, this is, you know, this is the way to do it. And so, so um, and you, it, it, it's so interesting. And in business, you know, we've got all these books about the lunatic fringe and, and the diffusion of diversity and, and the, uh, all these stuff come from this, you know, from the, from the crackpot edge, okay? And so um, when Peter Bain wrote uh, the Urban Permaculture book, the most powerful statement in that book to me was, he said, in times of epochal change, the most important thing to preserve in a civilization is the minority view. Wow. Is that not profound? That is. Wow. And, and, and I think everybody feels like we're in, a, we're in an epochal change here. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 there's an MIT professor, I can't call his name right now, he's of German, German dis, uh, extraction, but um, anyway, he's, he's, a, he's an MIT professor. He's one of these futuristic pro prophets. You know, he looks at trends and here's mm -hmm. where we're going to be. And, and um, without any partisanship at all, he said, he said, there are three things that I'm finding that Greens, conservatives, libertarians, Democrats, Republicans, you know, everybody agrees on. Number one, we're going the wrong direction, and in 2020, we hit the wall. Ah. All right, that's number one. Number two, I want to help. I, I, I want to I help us change. I want to do yeah. that. And number three, I don't know how. Wow. Is that not profound? Oh, Those my gosh. Those three things. We're going the wrong direction, and we hit the wall in 2020. I want to help, and I don't know how. And it brings you back to Weston A. Price's alleged final words when he was asked, what do we do now? What are your you know, final words to us? And he said, you, you teach, teach, you teach, teach you, you teach. teach. I mean, I get chill bumps. That, yeah. that's, and and so, so for me, you know, I don't know what that future holds. I don't know where it is. But I know that according you know, the Stephen Covey Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I know that, that there's an influence. I influence the fields out here. I influence the animals. I influence our customers. And so whatever influence I have, it's to try to bring people to a to a, an affirmative abundance, mm -hmm. grateful mentality to fully live today because the tomorrows are the cumulative effect of how we live today. Mm. I don't know how I'm going to be living a year from now, two years down, three, okay? But I know one thing, if I live today in its fullness, yeah. the way I should, that's the best I can do for the year from now having the best outcome. That's where I am. <laughs> Simple to you. I love it so much, Joel. I, that's exactly what I want to do too. It's just, you know, kind of keep my head down, keep doing what I know is going to benefit people around right. me. That's one reason I had to come back and have this conversation with you because I'm like, let's just keep plugging away with what we know is real and mm -hmm. is joy and life giving. So thanks for this time. This has been amazing. Thanks, Hilda. You're always a special. Thanks for watching, you guys. Comment below and let me know what you think of Joel's opinion one year later. And you guys, if you want to hang out with us, we're going to be together May 22nd at an event at Polyface Farms called How to Thrive, Not Just Survive. Sign up in the link below or just go to my website, holistichilda.com. Thanks again. Hablamos pronto.